So welcome to another session of the anatomy series and today the topic of my discussion is about the thyroid gland. So just looking at the gross, gross anatomy of the thyroid gland. So I'll be speaking of the thyroid gland today. So looking at the thyroid gland, firstly, I'll, I would like to tell you a brief gist as to what how and where the thyroid gland is located. So thyroid gland is basically a butterfly shaped gland with having two lobes that is the right and the left lobe and the right and the left lobes are connected together by means of an isthmus. So this is the is these are the right and the left lobes and in the center the right and the left lobes are connected together by means of an isthmus. So while looking at the location of the thyroid gland, so the thyroid gland is located in front of the neck, in front of the neck just above the trachea it is located and the tracheal cartilages what are lying against it is going to lie against the tracheal cartilages so the isthmus of the thyroid gland the isthmus is going to lie at the level of the second and fourth tracheal ring so students out there the right and the left lobes are there of the thyroid gland it is a butterfly shaped gland it is having an isthmus the isthmus lies at the level of the second and fourth tracheal ring the thyroid gland approximately in an adult it weighs about 80 to 20 18 to 20 grams so the thyroid gland weighs about 18 to 20 grams and when talking of the cervical vertebrae as to what as to which level the thyroid gland is located so when looking at the cervical vertebrae that is the neck vertebrae the vertebral column so the thyroid gland lies opposite to the c5 between the c5 to the t1 that is the fifth cervical vertebrae to the first thoracic vertebrae it is the level the region of the thyroid um, cervical um, vertebrae and the, um, that at the level of the this vertebrae this cervical so the thyroid gland is located just opposite at the level of the vertebral column that is between the c5 vertebrae to the t1 vertebrae so already i have told you that the isthmus is going to lie at the level of the second to the fourth tracheal ring and the lower extent of the lobe, the lo extent it can extend up till the sixth tracheal ring. All right. So the isthmus is going to lie at the level of the second to the fourth tracheal ring in front of the trachea, and the lower lobe can extend maximum up till the sixth tracheal, sixth tracheal ring, and the upper extent of the lobe can go to the oblique ridge of the uh, oblique ridge of the thyroid cartilage. So mostly the procedures what are being carried out, that is the tracheostomy procedures if it is carried out, this tracheostomy procedure is done at the level of the second to fourth tracheal ring. Now moving on to the covering of the thyroid gland. So the thyroid gland is surrounded by two capsules. One is the true capsule and the other is the false capsule. So the true capsule of the thyroid gland is closely adhering to the thyroid that it is going to adhere very closely to the thyroid gland and the false capsule it forms from the pretracheal and the deep cervical fascia. So students out there when the thyroid gland is surrounded by a true capsule and a false capsule the true capsule is going to lie very close and it adheres to the thyroid gland very closely and the false capsule since it, the name was already given false so it is going obviously it is going to be derived from the pretracheal fascia and the deep cervical fascia so students the true and the false capsule one more important thing is that the true and the false capsule they unite posteriorly they unite posteriorly that is in from posterior from the posteriorly it is going to unite to form the suspensory ligament of berry this is a very important structure that is the suspensory ligament of berry and this suspensory ligament of berry is attached to the cricoid cartilage of the trachea 
of the tracheal rings. So, this suspensory ligament of Berry, since it is attached to the cricoid cartilage of the trachea, so it is because of it the trachea, the, the thyroid gland moves with every deglutition. So, it's a very important question as to why the thyroid gland moves with every deglutition. It is just because of the suspensory ligament of Berry which is attached to the cricoid cartilage of the trachea. So, this is the reason as to why the thyroid gland moves with every deglutition. So today I'll be basically focusing upon the anatomy of the thyroid gland and the arterial supply. So students out there moving on to the arterial supply of the thyroid gland. So one thing I've left over here that the right and the left lobe of the thyroid gland in addition to it there also there is also presence of a pyramidal lobe. So this pyramidal lobe is it's not found in all the individuals. It is mostly found in only 5 to 10 percent of the normal individuals and it is not a structure which is seen in every each and every individual. So this pyramidal lobe can be present in some of the individuals particularly and mostly it is found in 5 to 10 percent of the normal individuals. Now moving on to the next topic that is the arterial supply. So students out there the thyroid gland is a uh, rich is richly supplied with blood vessels since it has to secrete its hormone. So the thyroid gland is richly supplied by blood vessels and the blood vessels supplying the thyroid gland are particularly the superior thyroid artery, the inferior thyroid artery and the thyroidema. So just now I have already told you that the pyramidal lobe is found only in 5 to 10 percent of the normal individuals. Similarly the thyroidema it is also not found in all the individuals. It is mostly found in some of the individuals particularly in the 5 to 10 percent of the individuals this thyroidema can be found. So it is not a must in every individual that this thyroidema is found. So 5 to 10 percent of the individuals they might possess this thyroidema and this thyroidema may arise from the either from the brachiocephalic trunk or it can arise from the arch of aorta. Now looking at the arterial supply. So just uh, we are going to have a look as the deeper aspect as to how the thyroid gland is richly supplied with blood vessels. Now students for simplicity I have made this diagram. So from the heart there arises the arch of aorta. So this arch of aorta can be divided into the ascending arch, the ascending aorta and the descending aorta. So moving on to the on the left side. So on the left side what is going to happen is that the arch of aorta gives rise to the external carotid artery. Alright. So on the, the arch of aorta on the left hand side it gives rise to the left common carotid artery. Uh, the external carotid artery is going to lie and this the superior thyroid artery the superior thyroid artery the superior thyroid artery the superior thyroid artery is a branch of the external carotid artery which arises from the arch of the aorta. Now moving on to the inferior thyroid artery. The inferior thyroid artery, this is the superior thyroid artery and this is the inferior thyroid artery. While looking at the inferior thyroid artery, the inferior thyroid artery arises from the subclavian artery on the left hand side on the left hand side the superior uh, the inferior thyroid artery arises from the thyrocervical trunk which is inter which is a branch of the left subclavian artery so initially while moving on to the arch of aorta so the arch of aorta is going to give rise to the left subclavian artery from the left subclavian artery there arises the thyrocervical trunk and from this thyrocervical trunk the inferior thyroid artery is going to originate to supply to the thyroid gland so moving on to this was about the left side so moving on to the right side so already i have told you that from this the, from the left hand side the inferior thyroid artery is arising from the 
the inferior thyroid artery is again uh, arising from the thyrocervical trunk and the thyrocervical trunk is a branch of the right subclavian artery and this right subclavian artery on the right hand side it is a branch of the brachiocephalic trunk so students make this point very clear in your brain once again i'm going to repeat the inferior thyroid artery it is the branch of the thyrocervical trunk so this thyrocervical trunk on the left hand side it is a direct branch of the left subclavian artery while in the case of the right hand side the thyrocervical trunk is again originating from the right subclavian artery but this right subclavian artery is a branch of the brachiocephalic trunk so another very important thing what needs to be discussed is about the nerve supply of the uh, nerve supply nerves what are lying in close proximity to the arteries of the thyroid the superior thyroid artery and the inferior thyroid artery what are the nerves of the larynx what are closely associated to it so students out there one thing more uh, i would like to tell you that the vagus nerve the thyroid, the vagus nerve is going to give is its branches one one of the branches is the external laryngeal nerve the vagus nerves gives rise to the external laryngeal nerve so this external laryngeal nerve during its course it is going so i have made this a uh, very simpler as to during what as to what is the course of the external laryngeal nerve so the vagus nerve which gives rise to the external laryngeal nerve so this is the external laryngeal nerve and this is the thyroid gland so what is going to happen is the external laryngeal nerve is going to lie in close proximity to the superior thyroid artery and it just before joining the uh, before coming into the body of the structure of the thyroid gland the external laryngeal nerve is a little bit uh, at away from the gland it is going to lie in very close proximity to the superior thyroid artery so students during any thyroid surgeries whenever any resection of the thyroid gland is to be taken out is to be carried out so it is a must that as to we should prevent damage to the external laryngeal nerve and we should prevent damage to the recurrent laryngeal nerve because these are the laryngeal nerves which are going to lie in close proximity to the inferior thyroid artery and the superior thyroid artery is it clear so the superior thyroid artery the nerve what is lying what is going to lie in close proximity is the external laryngeal nerve and the superior thyroid artery the nerve which is going to lie in close proximity is the recurrent laryngeal nerve so at the time of surgery where should the ligature of these artery should be carried out it is a very important question and this concept needs a uh, deep deep understanding we should have a deep understanding of this concept so suppose this is the thyroid gland what i have drawn so students as i have already already told you that this this is the superior thyroid artery this is the superior thyroid artery and this is the external laryngeal nerve all right this is the superior thyroid artery and this is the external laryngeal nerve and this is the external laryngeal nerve so as you can see the external laryngeal nerve it is quite a bit when moving towards the substance of the gland it is away from the gland but on moving a bit away from the gland the external laryngeal nerves comes very close to the superior thyroid artery so it should the superior thyroid artery during any surgery it should never be ligated away from the gland all right so in order to prevent damage to the external laryngeal nerve the superior thyroid artery should be ligated towards the substance of the gland all right so and the uh, moving talking of the recurrent laryngeal nerve so this is again the body of the thyroid gland and this is the inferior thyroid artery and this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve so the what we can see is that the recurrent laryngeal nerves comes very in close proximity 
to the inferior thyroid artery just towards the uh, substance of the gland. Is it clear? Towards the substance of the gland, the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the inferior thyroid artery are going to lie in close proximity. So, at the time of any surgery or resection of the thyroid gland, the ligation of the inferior thyroid artery should always be done away from the gland just to prevent any kind of damage to the thyroid gland. So, students, this, the, this was about the, at the time of surgeries, the ligature of the artery should be done where? So in case of the superior thyroid artery, the ligature should be done close to the gland. And in case of the inferior thyroid artery, the ligature should be done away from the gland to prevent damage to their respective nerves. All right. So again, I have made a mnemonic over here. The mnemonic what I have made to easily make out as to remember as to how the ligature is to be carried out. So the recurrent R Rhea Sane. Rhea Sane was a very famous Indian Bollywood actress. So this is the mnemonic, what is the trick to remember about uh, the ligature. So R is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. I stands for the inferior thyroid artery and A stands for the away. So recurrent laryngeal nerve, inferior thyroid artery away from the gland. Clear? Similarly, SEN of the same. So S is the superior thyroid artery, E is the external laryngeal nerve and N is the near the gland. So students, just by remembering the word Rhea Sane, R-I-A Rhea and S-E-N Sane, we can very easily remember as to where at the time of surgery in order to prevent any damage to the external laryngeal nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve where the superior and the inferior thyroid artery should be ligated. So the inferior thyroid artery should be ligated away from the gland and the superior thyroid artery should be ligated towards the gland. So students out there, this was about the arterial supply of the thyroid gland and the brief discussion of the anatomy of the thyroid gland. So students, if you do like my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel and do press the bell icon so that you can be further updated about my newer videos. Thank you for watching.